change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. And in the end, he says, I want to be like you. Sometimes we have to be careful what we ask for. Sometimes we must be careful what we ask for, you see, because when you ask him to come into your heart, he's there. He's there. But you have to be ready for that. That is the problem sometimes. We ask God to come into our hearts before we make the decision to give our hearts over to him. He said in his word in one place in my through, he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you're not going to do what I say? You see, when we call him Lord, it means that he has taken control or he has taken charge over our lives. That's what we're asking him when we call him Lord or when we ask him to come into our hearts. So when we ask him, come into my heart, make it ever true, then we got to be ready to accept him into our heart. Because we're saying we want to be like you. And thus we find ourselves trying to follow Christ. And that is the purpose in our plan, to follow Christ. Therefore, when we beat our little chest and say we're Christians, then we have to be exhibiting Christ-like features. So be careful what you ask for. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. You see, I may have some big business deals that I need to do next week, so I can't be all the way truthful right now. I, I need to get this done, Jesus, so I'm going to wait a while. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find, and knock, and the door shall be open to you. Remember that. So when you ask, make sure that you're ready. Amen? Amen. And that's what we want to talk about this morning, being ready or getting ready. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 1, it says here, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. And five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say unto you, I know you not. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The message is to watch and prepare. Watch and prepare. This parable teaches us that the coming of Christ will be sudden and at a time when nobody can anticipate. It will be sudden and come at a time when no one can anticipate it's coming. 
So you have to be ready. You have to be ready. The bridegroom came. Ten virgins. Ten virgins. We'll say ten believers. Ten believers waiting for Christ. Five wise and five foolish. Their lives or their lamps was in order according to their knowledge. So while they waited, they went to sleep. And then when they woke up, the bridegroom was there. But the foolish had no oil. They had no oil. Oil being the substance that would give them the ability to bring forth light. I hope you're getting what it said here. The, the ten virgins was ten believers. The lamps were their lives. And the oil is what give them the power to present light. So they're there and they have no light. So it says that the five wise was ready to go. But the five foolish had to go back and get some more oil. And when they went back to get some more oil, Christ came and went. And by the time they got back, they were too late. He had come and gone. And the door was closed. And you say, oh man, that's not fair. That's not fair. They did everything, right? They showed up, they got dressed, and so forth. That's not fair. But it's not about fairness. It's not about fairness. It's about being ready. You must be ready. You have to be ready. Who has to be ready? You have to be ready. And you say, well, how do I get ready? You get ready with Romans 12, chapter 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means that you have to have a different outlook on things. You have to change your outlook on things. And then decide to follow after Christ. That's what gets you ready. Following after Christ. Having a different outlook on things. Everything that you see will become new. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says that he who is in Christ is a new creature. So everything that you view will have a new definition. It will have a new meaning to you. The everything that you knew when you were a sinner without Christ, all of that will have gone away and everything will be new. That's what it's saying to us. So we have to again fall into Romans 12 2 to renew our minds, to change our way of thinking and to be ready to follow Christ. And in order to be ready to follow Christ, then you got to go to Ephesians 4.27 that says, don't give place to the devil. Don't give place to them. Don't give the devil no space in your life. No space. And then again, you ask me, like, well, wait a minute. The devil is the prince of this world. The devil is the prince of this world. You can't get away from the devil. I mean, you know, I try to do right all the time. And lo and behold, I do something wrong. To hold on it, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You did it because you wanted to do it. You see, Jesus gave man power over all the power of the enemy. In Matthew 10, 1, he said to his disciples, go out and heal the sick, cure the diseased, and cast out devils. And then in Luke, Luke 10, 18, or 19, go, just go there, you'll find it. In 10, 18, 19, he did the same thing. He had 70 more people, and he told them the exact same thing. He said, go out and cure the diseases, heal the sick, and cast out demons. And to make sure that we understood what he was talking about when he left this earth on his ascension into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father, 
He said in Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them. They shall cast out devils in my name. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils in my name. Do you believe? If you believe, then you can cast out devils in the name of Jesus. But you must believe. And this is it pointing out to us that we have power over all the power of the enemy. So the enemy can't do anything to us. The Bible says, resist him and he will flee from you. He will flee from you. But you have to get rid of him in order to be ready for Christ. Because it says that Christ comes as a thief in the night. He's coming when you don't know it, in other words. 2 Peter 3.10 says, He comes as a thief in the night. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5.2 says, You know that he comes as a thief in the night. So you see, we have that information. So we have to be ready. And if we can't get ready if we're running from the devil. But when we resist the devil and he free from us, saying that we have all the power over the devil, then we have to use that power in order to follow Christ so that we can be ready when Christ comes. But first, we got to be ready for the devil. I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you're listening to me, you can't be ready for Christ if you're not ready for the devil. And you can't be ready for the devil if you're not ready for Christ. You got to have it together on both ends. Watch this. And God gave us the example. Watch this. Let me use this so I can move. I don't do well standing still. It, uh, in Luke chapter 4 of Luke, I you to watch this. Luke chapter 4 Two, three. Now these pages. It's, it's the devil. <laughs> it's the devil. Now, when Jesus went down to the Jordan and was baptized by John the Baptist, the Bible says that Jesus and John saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and lighting upon him. And then the sky opened and they heard a voice. John and Jesus. There was everybody around. But the other people, they heard rumbling and something like thunder. But what John and Jesus heard was the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is where we end up in, in Luke 4. And it says, then Jesus being filled with Holy Spirit. How do we know he was filled with the Holy Spirit? Because if we were to read above that, it would have said that Jesus and John saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove and lighting upon Jesus. So we know that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to say, he returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. I want you to listen closely to what I just said here. I say that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit because they saw it come down and get on him. But when he got back to the city, back to the city, it says that he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The point that we want to, to observe is which spirit led Jesus into the wilderness? Wasn't the Holy Spirit? Because his Holy Spirit came down and landed on him and stayed there. And then he got up and went back into the city. But when he got back into the city, it must have been an evil spirit that led him out into the wilderness. Because 
If you read your book, you'll see that there were many people filled with the Holy Spirit. None of them was ever led out into the wilderness. So that's not what the Holy Spirit does. It doesn't lead you out into the wilderness. The devil is the prince of this world. But he doesn't have all of the power of the world. You can resist him even though he is the prince of this world. Are you listening to me? I mean, well, let's look at it in, on, on a, a, a secular human level. We have law and we have uh, the president is the ruler of the country. But if he says something you don't like, you don't have to do it. But he's the ruler. But you don't have to do it. Same thing, the devil is the ruler of the world. But if he tell you to do something, you don't have to do it. And it's best that you don't because you know where that'll lead you. So the spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness for all intents and purposes, let's say it was an evil spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness. Because that's not what the Holy Spirit does. Because it led him into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil. Does that answer the question now? Make it a little clearer. That he was led out there by an evil spirit to be tempted by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Forty days, forty days without eating anything, I'm pretty sure he was hungry. He was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, do you think the devil didn't know who he was? The devil knew exactly who he was. But he said, if you are. He's talking to a hungry, weak man to infuse doubt in that man. Because wherever there's doubt and fear, we know that there's no faith. There's no faith where there's doubt and fear. If you believe with your heart and do not doubt, you can have whatsoever you say. Just one of the scriptures, Mark eleven, twenty-three. But you can't have any doubt and be successful with faith. So he said, if you be the Son of God, because he has a hungry man. But it takes us to where Paul tells us, says, when I am weak, that's when I am strong. When you are weak, that is when you have to call for help. When you are strong, you stick your chest out and say, I can handle this. And that's when you get beat down. But being weak, you cry out for help. When I am weak, then I am strong. I'm talking to the human side of us this morning. This is what we need to understand that we don't have it. Left to our own devices, the self, ourselves, the devil will beat us down every time. The boy's got some experience. He's been around since the Garden of Eden. You'd have showed up a nanosecond ago compared to how long he's been here. And he's seen a lot tougher people than we are. Oh, well, that, I, I, I shouldn't even said that. It's because I want to get off topic when I do things like that. We, <laughs> we, we're not strong anymore. We let other people direct our path. Whatever you say, go, you know, I'll go with that because that sounds good to me. I'm not going to read this book and try to figure it out for myself when I can listen to you and you can tell me that it's okay to do that. And then when he shows up, I'll just say, wow, my preacher said, and Jesus said, who? (laughs) 
That's what people tell me when I when I tell them something they don't believe. Well, my pastor said, then I break him out. And this is my pastor right here. Watch what he say. When Jesus Jesus was hungry after those forty days, and the devil said to him, "If you be the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Show me." who you are. If you are the son of God, show me who you are. Jesus could have turned that whole mountain into a bakery if he wanted to. Had donuts and bread and cookies and cakes all over the place. And if you think that we would be different from that, do you think that we'd be different from that? If we had the power Jesus have and somebody run up in your face said, if you are got the power of God, turn that stone into a loaf of bread. Boy, you drown them in bread just to show them how tough you was. They'd be digging themselves out of bread for the next six months. I'll show you some bread. But you see, Jesus didn't have to do that because he knew who he was. He knew who he was. And watch what he says here. Then Jesus answered him saying, It is written. What does the word say? I'm trying to go somewhere this morning. What does the word say? It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You don't have to prove yourself when you know who you are. Just do what you do. Just do what you do. Then the devil taking him. Who took him? The devil taking him. This is that same verb as he was led into the wilderness. Now they're saying he took him. They're clarifying it. It is that same spirit. He then the devil taking him on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And in a moment of time, and the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered unto me and I give it to whomever I wish therefore if you will worship before me I will it will be yours did I not say the devil is the prince of this world the devil just told Jesus the same thing. I'm going to take you up on this high mountain and you see everything out there, everything around here is mine. Everything out here is mine. Now what could Jesus have said to that? He could have said to that, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is not yours. All of this was made by me, for me. That's what the Bible said. Everything that is made was made by him and for him. But the devil says, it's mine. And I can give it to you if I want to. Give it to whoever I want to. That's what he said. His, his words were, he could give it to whomever he choose. Now how can the devil give what is not his? Because it is his lawfully it is his lawfully why is that because Adam gave it to him remember let us make man in our image and in our likeness and give him dominion over everything God gave it to Adam gave him dominion over everything that he had made and then Adam went and ate from the tree. And the book says, whomever you serve, that be your master. 
whomever you serve, that be your master. So Adam lowered himself in the presence of the devil, giving the devil authority over him. And having that authority, then he took dominion over the world, over the earth. And now here's Jesus being taken by the devil up on a mountain and showed everything. And you got to understand something here. That Jesus was Jesus all of his life. Jesus was Jesus all of his life. So why is it that now that he's 30 years old, the devil is just now attacking him? Did, did you put those, those figures together? You know, when you're in math, you have to add things up. Not to add things up. Jesus was born Bethlehem. And when he got to be about two years old, if you recall, the devil made a run at him. When the wise men came bearing those gifts, the frankincense, myrrh, and gold, and they ran across Herod and said, we come to see the king and Herod being the king said, wait a minute. You know, another king around here. Who are, who are? They said, no, a king was born over there. He said, well, you go find him and worship him and then come back and tell me where he is so I can go worship him. But I'm going to cut his little head off. That he didn't say that, but that's what he's thinking. And they went and found him. But then God gave them an option to go home the other way and don't tell Herod nothing. So now Herod don't know who he is, but he knows where he is. So what does he do? He sends his soldiers to kill them all, kill all of the babies that are two years old and below, because that's the range where he is, two years and below. That is the only time that Jesus' life had ever been threatened. And now here he is 30 years old and the devil haven't paid him any attention since then. Why do you suppose that was? It's a message for you. It's a message for you because he was filled with the Holy Ghost and now he becomes an enemy to Satan. When you accept Christ in your life to become the Lord of your life, you have turned on Satan. You become a turncoat. So you become a target. I hope you understand what I'm talking about here. And this is why we're talking this morning about being ready. So you can't get ready unless you have what Jesus had. To put the devil in flight, I mean. When he showed Jesus all of this, this, these kingdoms, he calls them. All of these kingdoms. And he give them to whomever he wished. Therefore, if you will worship before me, I will give them all to you. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written. What does the word say? What does the word say? You shall not worship you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you worship. You shouldn't worship anything other than God. You shall worship the Lord your God and only him should you serve. There's a message in here. You see, we can't fight the devil with what we got. This is why when you're weak, you become strong. You become strong because you call on the name of the Lord. You use God's tools, the word of God. That is the only weapon that you have to defeat him with. You can't beat him with your AK-47 or your, your switchblade. You got some brass knuckles. Oh yeah, I got a lot of stuff. I can handle it. No, you can't beat him with that. It has to be with the word of God. This is why 
Jesus is so confident in himself because he's not fighting him. It's the word of God, the power of God. The devil is in charge. The devil owns everything, but he doesn't have the final say. Everything that he does or gets to do is through God's grace. Do you know God gives grace to the devil? He doesn't take the world away from him. He lets him keep it because he won it. He sent Jesus to do that. He sent Jesus to do that. He had to take it back the same way the devil wanted. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been legal. Wouldn't have been legal. God is the rightful owner. Because he created it. He made it. And he has all power. And all knowledge. The devil don't have that. But the devil do have control of the world. But we don't have to listen to him. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave us that back. He gave us the power over death. That's where our eternal life comes from. Jesus is death on the cross. The wages of sin is death. Because of sin, somebody had to die. And if Jesus don't do it, then all of us would have had to do it individually, on our own, by ourselves. And we were not equipped to prevent it. Because God did not create us to die. He created us to commune with him. And we can't do that dead. But that's where Adam sent us, to our grave, to death. But now we can live. We have to leave here. Don't, don't misinterpret. Oh, he's down there saying you ain't never going to die. Uh, something's wrong with him. No, you're going to leave here. You're going to leave here. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you see, we, don't, we are not going anywhere. As long as we are ready. But we must be ready. Now watch this. Then it says, Then, after Jesus refused him again, Then he brought him, another verb, He brought Jesus. First, something led him. We know who it was. <laughs> because he reveals himself. He led him. Then he took him. Now he's bringing him. He brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. That, that ought to have been interesting. That pinnacle's a little sharp thing. The, the high it goes, the steep it gets. Must have been pinnacle. Anyway, he sits him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, if again, if you are the Son of God, creating that doubt. And that's what gets us a lot of times. If you're so good, why are you doing this? Oh, I ain't that good. If you're so good, why are you doing this? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I knew I was doing bad. No, I'm, I'm not that good. It's just that I, I'm making a mistake now, but I'm going to clean this up. Get out of my face, Mr. Devil. I, I, I'm sorry, God. And you fixed it. You fi but we have to be there. We have to be ready. We have to have that oil. That oil is what prepares us to let our light shine. Without oil, got no light. Our oil. He said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Now the devil is fitting to use the word. The devil is using the word. He said, throw yourself down here because it is written. And watch where he goes with this. It is written. He shall give me, God shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands 
They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Now the devil knows scripture. So I'm, I'm warning you, see, when somebody run up to you talking scripture, just like them virgins, they knew scripture, they had attended service, they looked just like the rest of them. All 10 of them looked just like, all 12 of them looked just like, that was 10. All 10 of them looked just alike. The only difference was the foolish didn't have no oil. But they could quote scripture. They had attended service. And they was dressed and ready and out there waiting. If Jesus had come when they first got there, they'd have been in the right place at the right time. But God is all-knowing. Can't trick him. Everybody else thought they were ready. They thought they were ready. But they didn't have no oil. They wasn't ready. Now here's Satan quoting scripture. And we say, wow, this must be a good guy. He can quote scripture. But what we fail to realize, because we didn't have enough oil, we realize that he didn't say the whole thing. <laughs> he gave them just enough to let them know he knew. And if they don't know the difference, then he wins. But he said, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. It's good to keep me, protect me. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. They won't let you get hurt. So you can just throw yourself off here. But see, what he didn't say is, what? defeated him. In that very verse, it says what feed, defeats him. It says that he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Four words he left out. Four words changes that whole scenario. Because if he keeps Jesus in his ways, it will keep him away from him. And it will keep him in power over him in his way. So they just keep you. That's what he just said, just keep you. He was quoting this and then he, he realized what he said. And then he said, and didn't give it, keep you in your way. Because the way is the truth and the life. So if he keeps Jesus in his way, then Jesus will be right where he is now, resisting him. But just keeping him, hey, be any way he want to be. So you got to beware of people who can quote your scripture. They may not have no oil. It give you just enough to get you in trouble. The test is, what we're talking about here this morning. Watch and prepare. Watch them. Okay, pay no attention to what they say. They could have read that in, in a, off of a Cracker Jack box. Could have read that anywhere. Sounds good, so I'm going to quote that every now and then. Wow, that is wisdom. That's good. But they don't know what it means. They just read it off the box. Watch them. See if they are applying it to their lives before you take it and use it in your life. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. When the devil can't break you, he'll get on away from there because he don't want to waste his time. There's too many fish in the sea. You kick him off your property, he'll go next door or on down the street somewhere. But you have to be ready. You have to be ready for him so that you can be ready for Christ. 
And you have to be ready for Christ by staying ready for the devil. Watch and prepare, but you must be ready. You see, Grandma can bring you to, to a certain point, and that's far as she can take you. From that point on, you have to do the rest because only you can answer for the deeds that you do in this life. Grandma will pray her heart out and bring you to Christ, bring you to the church house door, so to speak. But you have to accept Christ and then you have to walk in his ways. So in all that you do, do in line with God's word because you have to be ready. You must be ready.